The Boeing B-29 Superfortress is a four-engine propeller-driven heavy bomber designed by Boeing and flown primarily by the United States during World War II and the Korean War. Named in allusion to its predecessor, the B-17 Flying Fortress, the Superfortress was designed for high-altitude strategic bombing but also excelled in low-altitude night incendiary bombing. B-29s also dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. One of the largest aircraft of World War II, the B-29 had state-of-the-art technology, including a pressurized cabin, dual-wheeled, tricycle landing gear, and an analog computer-controlled fire control system that allowed one gunner and a fire control officer to direct four remote machine gun turrets. The $3 billion cost of design and production $41,750,462,107 today, far exceeding the $1.9 billion cost of the Manhattan Project, made the B-29 program the most expensive of the war. The B-29's advanced design allowed it to remain in service in various roles throughout the 1950s. The type was retired in the early 1960s, after 3,970 had been built. A few were used as flying television transmitters by the Stratovision Company. The Royal Air Force flew the B-29 as the Washington until 1954. The B-29 was the progenitor of a series of Boeing-built bombers, transports, tankers, reconnaissance aircraft and trainers. The re-engined B-50 Superfortress became the first aircraft to fly around the world non-stop, during a 94-hour flight in 1949. The Boeing C-97 Stratofreighter airlifter, first flown in 1944, was followed in 1947 by its commercial airliner variant, the Boeing Model 377 Stratocruiser. This bomber-to-airliner derivation was similar to the B-17, Model 307 Evolution. In 1948, Boeing introduced the KB-29 tanker, followed in 1950 by the Model 377 derivative KC-97. A line of outsized cargo variants of the Stratocruiser is the Guppy, Mini Guppy, Super Guppy, which remain in service with NASA and other operators. The Soviet Union produced an unlicensed reverse-engineered copy, the Tupolev 2-4. Dozens of B-29s remain as static displays but only two, Fifi and Doc, still fly. Topic. Design and development In the run-up to World War II, the United States Army Air Corps concluded that the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, which would be the United States' primary strategic bomber of the war, would be inadequate for the Pacific Theater, which required a bomber that could carry a larger payload more than 3,000 miles. In response, Boeing began work on pressurized long-range bombers in 1938. Boeing's design study for the Model 334 was a pressurized derivative of the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress with nosewheel undercarriage. Although the Air Corps did not have money to pursue the design, Boeing continued development with its own funds as a private venture. In April 1939, Charles Lindbergh convinced General Henry H. Arnold to produce a new bomber in large numbers to counter the Nazi production. 
In December 1939, the Air Corps issued a formal specification for a so called superbomber that could deliver 20,000 pounds kilograms of bombs to a target 2,667 miles 4,292 kilometers away and at a speed of 400 miles per hour 640 kilometers per hour. Boeing's previous private venture studies formed the starting point for its response to this specification. Boeing submitted its Model 345 on the 11th of May 1940 in competition with designs from Consolidated Aircraft, the Model 33, later to become the B-32, Lockheed, the Lockheed XB-30, and Douglas, the Douglas XB-31. Douglas and Lockheed soon abandoned work on their projects, but Boeing received an order for two flying prototypes, given the designation XB-29, and an airframe for static testing on 24 August 1940, with the order being revised to add a third flying aircraft on 14 December. Consolidated continued to work on its Model 33 as it was seen by the Air Corps as a backup in case of problems with Boeing's design. Boeing received an initial production order for 14 service test aircraft and 250 production bombers in May 1941, this being increased to 500 aircraft in January 1942. The B-29 featured a fuselage design with circular cross-section for strength. The need for pressurization in the cockpit area also led to the B-29 being one of very few American combat aircraft of World War II to have a steepless cockpit design, without a separate windscreen for the pilots. Manufacturing the B-29 was a complex task. It involved four main assembly factories, a pair of Boeing-operated plants at Renton, Washington Boeing Renton, and Wichita, Kansas now Spirit Aerosystems, a Bell plant at Marietta, Georgia near Atlanta, Bell Atlanta and a Martin plant at Omaha, Nebraska Martin Omaha. Off it field. Thousands of subcontractors were involved in the project. The first prototype made its maiden flight from Boeing Field, Seattle on 21 September 1942. The combined effects of the aircraft's highly advanced design, challenging requirements, immense pressure for production, and hurried development caused setbacks. The second prototype, which, unlike the unarmed first, was fitted with a Sperry defensive armament system using remote-controlled gun turrets sighted by periscopes, first flew on 30 December 1942, this flight being terminated due to a serious engine fire. On 18 February 1943, the second prototype, flying out of Boeing Field in Seattle, experienced an engine fire and crashed. The crash killed Boeing test pilot Edmund T. Allen and his 10-man crew, 20 workers at the Fry Meat Packing Plant and a Seattle firefighter. Changes to the production craft came so often and so fast that in early 1944, B-29s flew from the production lines directly to modification depots for extensive rebuilds to incorporate the latest changes. AAF contracted modification centers and its own air depot system struggled to handle the scope of the requirements. Some facilities lacked hangars capable of housing the giant B-29, requiring outdoor work in freezing cold weather, further delaying necessary modification. By the end of 1943, although almost 100 aircraft had been delivered, only 15 were airworthy. 
This prompted an intervention by General Hap Arnold to resolve the problem, with production personnel being sent from the factories to the modification centers to speed availability of sufficient aircraft to equip the first bomb groups in what became known as the Battle of Kansas. This resulted in 150 aircraft being modified in the five weeks between 10 March and 15 April 1944, the most common cause of maintenance headaches and catastrophic failures were the engines. Although the Wright R3350 duplex cyclone radial engines later became a trustworthy workhorse in large piston-engined aircraft, early models were beset with dangerous reliability problems. This problem was not fully cured until the aircraft was fitted with the more powerful Pratt & Whitney R4360 Wasp Major in the B-29D, B-50 program, which arrived too late for World War II. Interim measures included cuffs placed on propeller blades to divert a greater flow of cooling air into the intakes which had baffles installed to direct a stream of air onto the exhaust valves. Oil flow to the valves was also increased, asbestos baffles installed around rubber push rod fittings to prevent oil loss, thorough pre-flight inspections made to detect unseated valves, and frequent replacement of the uppermost five cylinders every 25 hours of engine time and the entire engines every 75 hours. Pilots, including the present-day pilots of the commemorative Air Force's Fifi, one of the last two remaining flying B-29s, describe flight after takeoff as being an urgent struggle for airspeed. Generally, flight after takeoff should consist of striving for altitude. Radial engines need airflow to keep them cool, and failure to get up to speed as soon as possible could result in an engine failure and risk of fire. One useful technique was to check the magnetos while already on takeoff roll rather than during a conventional static engine run-up before takeoff. In wartime, the B-29 was capable of flight at altitudes up to 31,850 feet 9,710 meters, at speeds of up to 350 miles per hour 560 kilometers per hour, true airspeed. This was its best defense, because Japanese fighters could barely reach that altitude, and few could catch the B-29 even if they did attain that altitude. Only the heaviest of anti-aircraft weapons could reach it, and since the Axis forces did not have proximity fuses, hitting or damaging the aircraft from the ground in combat proved difficult. Topic. Defensive gun turret emplacements The General Electric Central Fire Control System on the B-29 directed four remotely controlled turrets armed with 2.50 Browning M2 machine guns each. All weapons were aimed optically with targeting computed by analog electrical instrumentation. There were five interconnected sighting stations located in the nose and tail positions and three plexiglass blisters in the central fuselage. Five General Electric analog computers one dedicated to each site increased the weapon's accuracy by compensating for factors such as airspeed, lead, gravity, temperature and humidity. The computers also allowed a single gunner to operate two or more turrets including tail guns simultaneously. The gunner in the upper position acted as fire control officer, managing the distribution of turrets among the other gunners during combat. 
The tail position initially had 2.50 Browning machine guns and a single M2 20mm cannon. Later aircraft had the 20mm cannon removed, and sometimes replaced by a third machine gun. In early 1945, Major General Curtis LeMay, commander of 21 Bomber Command, the Marianas based B 29 equipped bombing force ordered most of the defensive armament and remote controlled sighting equipment removed from the B 29s under his command. The affected aircraft had the same reduced defensive firepower as the nuclear weapons delivery intended silverplate B 29 airframes, and could carry greater fuel and bomb loads as a result of the change. The lighter defensive armament was made possible by a change in mission from high altitude, daylight bombing with high explosive bombs to low altitude night raids using incendiary bombs. As a consequence of this requirement, Bell Atlanta BA produced a series of 311 B 29 Bs that had turrets and sighting equipment omitted, except for the tail position, which was fitted with an APG 15 fire control radar. This version could also have an improved APQ 7 Eagle. Bombing through overcast radar fitted in an airfoil shaped radome under the fuselage. Most of these aircraft were assigned to the 315th Bomb Wing, Northwest Field, Guam. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Pressurization. The crew enjoyed, for the first time in a bomber, full pressurization comfort. This first ever cabin pressure system for an Allied production bomber was developed for the B-29 by Garrett Air Search. The nose and the cockpit were pressurized, but the designers were faced with deciding whether to have bomb bays that were not pressurized, between fore and aft pressurized sections, or a fully pressurized fuselage with the need to depressurize to drop their loads. The solution was a long tunnel over the two bomb bays so as not to interrupt pressurization during bombing. Crews could crawl back and forth between the fore and aft sections, with both areas and the tunnel pressurized. The bomb bays were not pressurized. <laughs> <laughs> Operational history <laughs> World War II In September 1941, the Army Air Force's plans for war against Germany and Japan proposed basing the B-29 in Egypt for operations against Germany as British airbases were likely to be overcrowded. Air Force planning throughout 1942 and early 1943 continued to have the B-29 deployed initially against Germany, only transferring to the Pacific after the end of the war in Europe. By the end of 1943, however, plans had changed, partly due to production delays, and the B-29 was dedicated to the Pacific theater. A new plan implemented at the direction of President Franklin D. Roosevelt as a promise to China, called Operation Matterhorn, deployed the B-29 units to attack Japan from four forward bases in southern China, with five main bases in India, and to attack other targets in the region from China and India as needed. The Chengdu region was eventually chosen over the Guilin region to avoid having to raise, equip, and train 50 Chinese divisions to protect the advanced bases from Japanese ground attack. 
The XX Bomber Command, initially intended to be two combat wings of four groups each, was reduced to a single wing of four groups because of the lack of availability of aircraft, automatically limiting the effectiveness of any attacks from China. This was an extremely costly scheme, as there was no overland connection available between India and China, and all supplies had to be flown over the Himalayas, either by transport aircraft or by the B-29s themselves, with some aircraft being stripped of armor and guns and used to deliver fuel. B-29s started to arrive in India in early April 1944. The first B-29 flight to airfields in China over the Himalayas, or the Hump, took place on 24 April 1944. The first B-29 combat mission was flown on 5 June 1944, with 77 out of 98 B-29s launched from India bombing the railroad shops in Bangkok and elsewhere in Thailand. Five B-29s were lost during the mission, none to hostile fire. Topic. Forward base in China On 5 June 1944, B-29s raided Bangkok, in what is reported as a test before being deployed against the Japanese home islands. Sources do not report from where they launched, and vary as to the numbers involved. 77, 98, and 114 being claimed. Targets were Bangkok's Memorial Bridge and a major power plant. Bombs fell over two kilometers away, damaged no civilian structures, but destroyed some tram lines and destroyed both a Japanese military hospital and the Japanese secret police headquarters. On 15 June 1944, 68 B-29s took off from bases around Chengdu, 47 B-29s bombed the Imperial Iron and Steel Works at Yawada, Kyoto Prefecture, Japan. This was the first attack on Japanese islands since the Doolittle Raid in April 1942. The first B-29 combat losses occurred during this raid, with one B-29 destroyed on the ground by Japanese fighters after an emergency landing in China, one lost to anti-aircraft fire over Yawada, and another, the Stockett's rocket after Capt. Marvin M. Stockett, aircraft commander, B291 BW426261, disappeared after takeoff from Chakulia, India, over the Himalayas, 12 Kia, 11 crew and 1 passenger. This raid, which did little damage to the target, with only one bomb striking the target factory complex, nearly exhausted fuel stocks at the Chengdu B-29 bases, resulting in a slow down of operations until the fuel stockpiles could be replenished. Starting in July, the raids against Japan from Chinese airfields continued at relatively low intensity. Japan was bombed on the 7th of July 1944 14 B29s the 29th of July 70 plus the 10th of August 24 the 20th of August 61 the 8th of September 90 the 26th of September 83 the 25th of October 59 the 12th of November 29 the 21st of November 61 the 19th of December 36 
the 6th of January 1945, B-29s were withdrawn from airfields in China by the end of January 1945. Throughout this prior period, B-29 raids were also launched from China and India against many other targets throughout Southeast Asia, including a series of raids on Singapore and Thailand. On 2 November 1944, 55 B-29s raided Bangkok's Bang Su marshalling yards in the largest raid of the war. Seven RTAF Nakajima Ki 43 Hayabusas from Fung Bin Air Group 16 and 14 IJAAF Ki 43s attempted intercept. RTAF FLTLT Thirdzik Warasap attacked a B 29, damaging it, but was shot down by return fire. One B-29 was lost, possibly the one damaged by FLTLT Thirdzik. On 14 April 1945, a second B-29 raid on Bangkok destroyed two key power plants, and was the last major attack conducted against Thai targets. The B-29 effort was gradually shifted to the new bases in the Mariana Islands in the Central Pacific, with the last B-29 combat mission from India flown on 29 March 1945. <laughs> new Mariana Islands Air Bases In addition to the logistical problems associated with operations from China, the B-29 could only reach a limited part of Japan while flying from Chinese bases. The solution to this problem was to capture the Mariana Islands, which would bring targets such as Tokyo, about 1,500 miles kilometers north of the Marianas within range of B-29 attacks. The Joint Chiefs of Staff agreed in December 1943 to seize the Marianas. U.S. forces invaded Saipan on the 15th of June 1944. Despite a Japanese naval counterattack which led to the Battle of the Philippine Sea and heavy fighting on land, Saipan was secured by the 9th of July. Operations followed against Guam and Tinian, with all three islands secured by August. Naval construction battalions Seabies began at once to construct air bases suitable for the B 29, commencing even before the end of ground fighting. In all, five major air fields were built two on the flat island of Tinian, one on Saipan, and two on Guam. Each was large enough to eventually accommodate a bomb wing consisting of four bomb groups, giving a total of 180 B-29s per airfield. These bases could be supplied by ship, and unlike the bases in China, were not vulnerable to attacks by Japanese ground forces. The bases became the launch sites for the large B-29 raids against Japan in the final year of the war. The first B-29 arrived on Saipan on 12 October 1944, and the first combat mission was launched from there on 28 October 1944, with 14 B-29s attacking the Truk Atoll. The 73rd Bomb Wing launched the first mission against Japan from bases in the Marianas, on 24 November 1944, sending 111 B-29s to attack Tokyo. For this first attack on the Japanese capital since the Doolittle Raid in April 1942, 73rd Bomb Wing Wing Commander Brigadier General Emmett O'Donnell Jr. acted as Mission Command Pilot in B-29 Dauntless Dottie. 
The campaign of incendiary raids started with the bombardment of Kobe on February 4, 1945, then peaked early with the most destructive bombing raid in human history even when the later silverplate-flown nuclear attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki are considered on the night of March 9–10, 1945 on Tokyo. From then on, the raids intensified, being launched regularly until the end of the war. The attacks succeeded in devastating most large Japanese cities with the exception of Kyoto and several others, and they gravely damaged Japan's war industries. Although less publicly appreciated, the mining of Japanese ports and shipping routes Operation Starvation carried out by B-29s from April 1945 reduced Japan's ability to support its population and move its troops. The atomic bombs Perhaps the most famous B-29s were the 65 examples of the Silverplate series, which were modified to drop atomic bombs. They were also stripped of all guns, except the tail ones, in order to have a lighter aircraft. The Silverplate aircraft were handpicked by Lieutenant Colonel Paul W. Tibbets for the mission, straight off the assembly line at the Omaha plant that was to become Offutt Air Force Base. The Silverplate bombers differed from other B-29s then in service by having fuel injection and reversible props. Pilot Charles Sweeney credits the reversible props for saving Boxchar after making an emergency landing on Okinawa following the Nagasaki bombing. Enola Gay, flown by Tibbets, dropped the first bomb, called Little Boy, on Hiroshima on 6 August 1945. Enola Gay is fully restored and on display at the Smithsonian's Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center. Outside Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., Boxchar dropped the second bomb, called Fat Man, on Nagasaki three days later. Boxchar is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Following the surrender of Japan, called VJ Day, B-29s were used for other purposes. A number supplied POWs with food and other necessities by dropping barrels of rations on Japanese POW camps. In September 1945, a long-distance flight was undertaken for public relations purposes. Generals Barney M. Giles, Curtis LeMay, and Emmett O'Donnell Jr. piloted three specially modified B-29s from Chitose Air Base in Hokkaido to Chicago Municipal Airport, continuing to Washington, D.C., the farthest non-stop distance C zero miles, to that date flown by U.S. Army Air Forces aircraft and the first ever non-stop flight from Japan to Chicago. Two months later, Colonel Clarence S. Irvine commanded another modified B-29, Pakusan Dreamboat, in a world record-breaking long-distance flight from Guam to Washington, D.C., traveling 7,916 miles 12,740 kilometers in 35 hours, with a gross takeoff weight of 155,000 pounds 70,000 kilograms. Almost a year later, in October 1946, the same B-29 flew 9,422 miles non-stop from Oahu, Hawaii, to Cairo, Egypt, in less than 40 hours, demonstrating the possibility of routing airlines over the polar ice cap. B-29s in Europe and Australia 
although considered for other theatres, and briefly evaluated in the United Kingdom, the B-29 was exclusively used in World War II in the Pacific Theatre. The use of YB-29BW41-363993, the so-named Hobo Queen, one of the service test aircraft flown around several British airfields in early 1944, was part of a disinformation program from its mention in an American-published Sternenbanner German-language propaganda leaflet from Leap Year Day in 1944, meant to be circulated within the Reich, with the intent to deceive the Germans into believing that the B-29 would be deployed to Europe. American post-war military assistance programs loaned the RAF enough superfortresses to equip several RAF bomber command squadrons. Veterans. The aircraft were known as the Washington B.1 in RAF service, and served from March 1950 until the last bombers were returned in early 1954. The phase out was occasioned by deliveries of the English electric Canberra bombers. Three Washingtons modified for ELINT duties and a standard bomber version used for support by No. 192 Squadron RAF were decommissioned in 1958, being replaced by de Havilland Comet aircraft. Two British Washington B.1 aircraft were transferred to the Royal Australian Air Force in 1952. They were attached to the Aircraft Research and Development Unit and used in trials conducted on behalf of the British Ministry of Supply. Both aircraft were placed in storage in 1956 and were sold for scrap in 1957. Topic: <laughs> Soviet Tupolev 24. At the end of World War II, Soviet development with modern four-engined heavy bombers lagged behind the West. The Petlyakov Pe-8 — the sole heavy bomber operated by the Soviet Air Forces — first flew in 1936. Intended to replace the obsolete Tupolev TB-3, only 93 Pe-8s were built by the end of World War II. During 1944 and 1945 five B-29s made emergency landings in Soviet territory after bombing raids on Japanese Manchuria and Japan. In accordance with Soviet neutrality in the Pacific War, the bombers were interned by the Soviets despite American requests for their return. Rather than return the aircraft, the Soviets reverse engineered the American B 29s and used them as a pattern for the Tupolev Tu 4. On 31 July 1944, Ramp Tramp of the United States Army Air Force 462nd very heavy bomb group was diverted to Vladivostok, Russia. Russia, after an engine failed and the propeller could not be feathered. This B-29 was part of a 100 aircraft raid against the Japanese Showa steel mill in Anshan, Manchuria. On 20 August 1944, Kate Paumat flying from Chengdu, was damaged by anti-aircraft gunfire during a raid on the Yawada Iron Works. Due to the damage sustained, the crew elected to divert to the Soviet Union. The aircraft crashed in the foothills of Sikot Allen mountain range east of Khabarovsk after the crew bailed out. On the 11th of November 1944, during a night raid on Omura on Kyushu, Japan, the General H.H. H. 
Arnold Special 42 was damaged and forced to divert to Vladivostok in the Soviet Union. The crew was interned. On 21 November 1944, Ding Hao 42 was damaged during a raid on an aircraft factory at Omura, Japan, and was also forced to divert to Vladivostok. The interned crews of these four B-29s were allowed to escape into American-occupied Iran in January 1945 but none of the B-29s were returned after Stalin ordered the Tupolev OKB to examine and copy the B-29, and produce a design ready for quantity production as soon as possible, because aluminum in the USSR was supplied in different gauges from from that available in the U.S. metric versus Imperial, the entire aircraft had to be extensively re-engineered. In addition, Tupolev substituted his own favored airfoil sections for those used by Boeing, with the Soviets themselves already having their own right R1820 derived 18 cylinder radial engine. The Shvetsov Ash 73 of comparable power and displacement to the B 29's duplex cyclone radials available to power their design. In 1947, the Soviets debuted both the Tupolev 2-4 NATO ASCC code named Bull, and the Tupolev 270 transport variant. The Soviets used tail gunner positions similar to the B-29 in many later bombers and transports. Topic. Transition to USAF Production of the B-29 was phased out after World War II with the last example completed by Boeing's Renton factory on 28 May 1946. Many aircraft went into storage, being declared excess inventory and were ultimately scrapped as surplus. Others remained in the active inventory and equipped the Strategic Air Command when it formed on 21 March 1946. In particular, the Silver Plate Modified aircraft of the 509th Composite Group remained the only aircraft capable of delivering the atomic bomb, and so the unit was involved in the Operation Crossroads series of tests, with B-29 Dave's Dream dropping a fat man type bomb in test able on 1 July 1946, some B-29s, fitted with filtered air sampling scoops, were used to monitor above-ground nuclear weapons testing by the United States and the USSR by sampling airborne radioactive contamination. The USAF also used the aircraft for long-range weather reconnaissance WB-29, for signals intelligence gathering EB-29, and photographic reconnaissance RB-29. Topic: <laughs> Korean War and Post-War Service. The B-29 was used in 1950–53 in the Korean War. At first, the bomber was used in normal strategic day bombing missions, though North Korea's few strategic targets and industries were quickly reduced to rubble. More importantly, in 1950 numbers of Soviet MiG-15 jet fighters appeared over Korea, and after the loss of 28 aircraft, future B-29 raids were restricted to night-only missions, largely in a supply interdiction role. The B-29 dropped the 1000 LBVB-3 
a range controllable version of the earlier Azan guided ordnance device and the 12000 LB VB13 Tarzan MCLOS radio controlled bombs in Korea, mostly for demolishing major bridges, like the ones across the Yalu River, and for attacks on dams. The aircraft also was used for numerous leaflet drops in North Korea, such as those for Operation Mula, a superfortress of the 91st Strategic Reconnaissance Squadron flew the last B-29 mission of the war on 27 July 1953. Over the course of the war, B-29s flew 20,000 sorties and dropped 200,000 tons, tons of bombs. B-29 gunners were credited with shooting down 27 enemy aircraft. In turn 34 B-29 were lost, 16 B-29 and reconnaissance variants were lost to North Korean fighters, 4 to anti-aircraft fire and 14 to other operational causes. Soviet records show that one MiG-15 jet fighter was shot down by a B-29 during the war. This occurred on 6 December 1950, when a B-29 shot down Lt. N. Sarikov, with the arrival of the Mammoth Convair B-36, the B-29 was reclassified as a medium bomber by the Air Force. However, the later B-50 Superfortress variant initially designated B-29D was good enough to handle auxiliary roles such as air-sea rescue, electronic intelligence gathering, air-to-air -air refueling, and weather reconnaissance. The B-50D was replaced in its primary role during the early 1950s by the Boeing B-47 Stratojet, which in turn was replaced by the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. The final active duty KB-50 and WB-50 variants were phased out in the mid-1960s, with the final example retired in 1965. A total of 3,970 B-29s were built. Topic variants The variants of the B-29 were outwardly similar in appearance but were in fact built around different wing center sections that affected the wingspan dimensions. The wing of the Renton built B-29ABN used a different subassembly process and was a foot longer in span. The Georgia built B-29BBA weighed less through armament reduction. A planned C series with more reliable R-3350s was not built. Moreover, engine packages changed, including the type of propellers and range of the variable pitch. A notable example were the eventual 65 airframes up to 1947's end for the silverplate and successor name Saddletree specifications, built for the Manhattan Project with Curtis electric reversible pitch propellers. The other differences came about through added equipment for varied mission roles. These roles included cargo carriers CB, rescue aircraft SB, weather ships WB, and trainers TB, and aerial tankers KB. Some were used for odd purposes such as flying relay television transmitters under the name of Stratavision. The B-29D led progressively to the XB-44, and the family of B-50 Superfortress which was powered by four 3,500 horsepower, 2,600 kilowatts Pratt and Whitney R-436035 Wasp major engines. Another role was as a mothership. 
This included being rigged for carrying the experimental parasite fighter aircraft, such as the McDonnell XF-85 Goblin and Republic F-84 Thunderjets as in-flight lock-on and offs. It was also used to develop the Airborne Early Warning Program. It was the ancestor of various modern radar picket aircraft. A B-29 with the original Wright duplex cyclone powerplants was used to air launch the famous Bell X-1 supersonic research rocket aircraft, as well as Cherokee rockets for the testing of ejection seats. Some B-29s were modified to act as test beds for various new systems or special conditions, including fire control systems, cold weather operations, and various armament configurations. Several converted B-29s were used to experiment with aerial refueling and redesignated as KB-29s. Perhaps the most important tests were conducted by the XB-29G, it carried prototype jet engines in its bomb bay, and lowered them into the air stream to conduct measurements. Topic. Operators Australia Royal Australian Air Force two former RAF aircraft for trials United Kingdom Royal Air Force 87 loaned from the USAF as the Washington B.1 United States United States Army Air Forces United States Air Force United States Navy four former USAF aircraft designated as P-2B patrol bombers Soviet Union Soviet Air Forces three USAAF B-29s made emergency landings in the USSR during World War II, and were never returned, they were reverse engineered to make the Soviet Tupolev 24 Bull bomber. Topic surviving aircraft 22 B-29s are preserved at various museums worldwide, including two flying examples, Fifi, which belongs to the Commemorative Air Force, and Doc, which belongs to Doc's friends. Doc made its first flight in 60 years from Wichita, Kansas, on 17 July 2016. There are also four complete airframes either in storage or under restoration, eight partial airframes in storage or under restoration, and four known wreck sites. The B-29 Miss Marilyn Gay flew 27 bombing missions during World War II, mainly over Japan, and five POW relief missions. It is displayed at Dobbins Air Reserve Base in Georgia. There is a restored B-29A, Jack's Hack, at the 58th Bomb Wing Memorial of the New England Air Museum in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Three of the silverplate B-29s modified to drop nuclear bombs survive. The Enola Gay nose number 82, which dropped the first atomic bomb, was fully restored and placed on display at the Smithsonian's Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center of the National Air and Space Museum near Washington Dulles International Airport in 2003. The B-29 that dropped Fat Man on Nagasaki, Boxchar, nose number 77, is restored and on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson AFB in Dayton, Ohio. The third is the 15th silverplate to be delivered, on the last day of the war in the Pacific. It is on display at the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History in Albuquerque, New Mexico, posed with a replica of the Mark III Fat Man nuclear bomb. 
Only two of the 22 museum aircraft are outside the United States, its Hog Wild at the Imperial War Museum Duxford and another at the Kai Aerospace Museum in Sachin, South Korea. One F-13, a photo reconnaissance version of the B-29, is located outside at Georgia Veterans State Park, near Cordell, Georgia. Topic. Accidents and incidents B-29 accidents and incidents include a crash of a B-29 near Clovis, New Mexico, on Friday evening, 10 November 1944 wherein all 15 members of the crew were killed. The 1948 Waycross B-29 crash, which resulted in the United States v. Reynolds lawsuit regarding state secrets privilege, the 1948 Lake Mead Boeing B-29 crash, and, the 1953, tip-toe, crash. On the 11th of April 1950 a B-29 departed Kirtland Air Force Base at 9.38 p.m. and crashed into a mountain on Manzano Base approximately three minutes later, killing the crew. Detonators were installed in the nuclear bomb on the aircraft. The bomb case was demolished and some high explosive he material burned in the gasoline fire. Other pieces of unburned he were scattered throughout the wreckage. Four spare detonators in their carrying case were recovered undamaged. There were no contamination or recovery problems. The recovered components were returned to the Atomic Energy Commission. Both the weapon and the capsule of nuclear material were on board the aircraft but the capsule was not inserted for safety reasons. A nuclear detonation was not possible. Topic: <laughs> Specifications B29 Data from Quest for Performance General Characteristics Crew, 11 Pilot, Copilot, Bombardier, Flight Engineer, Navigator, Radio Operator, Radar Observer, Right Gunner, Left Gunner, Central Fire Control, Tail Gunner Length, 99 feet 0 in 30.18 meters Wingspan, 141 feet 3 in 43.05 meters Height, 27 feet 9 in 8.46 meters Wing area, 1,736 square feet 161.3 square meters Aspect ratio, 11.5 Airfoil, route, Boeing 117, 22%, tip, Boeing 117, 9%, zero lift drag coefficient, 0 0.0241, frontal area, 41.16 square feet, 3.824 square meters, Empty weight, 74,500 pounds, 33,793 kilograms. Gross weight, 120,000 pounds, 54,431 kilograms. Max takeoff weight, 133,500 pounds, 60,555 kilograms, 135,000 pounds, 61,000 kilograms. Combat overload power plant, four times right R335023 duplex cyclone, 18-cylinder air-cooled turbo supercharged radial piston engines, 2,200 horsepower, 1,000. 600 kilowatts each propellers four bladed constant speed fully feathering propellers 16 feet 7 in 5.05 meters diameter performance 
maximum speed 357 miles per hour 575 kilometers per hour 310 kn cruise speed 290 miles per hour 467 kilometers per hour 252 kn stall speed 105 miles per hour 169 kilometers per hour 91 kn range 3250 miles 2824 nmi 5230 kilometers ferry range 5600 miles 4866 nmi 9012 kilometers service ceiling 31850 feet 9710 meters rate of climb 900 feet per minute 4.6 meters per second lift to drag 16.8 Wing loading, 69.12 pounds per square foot, 337.5 kilograms per square meter. Power, mass, 0.073 horsepower per pound, 0.120 kilowatts per kilogram. Armament. Guns, asterisk asterisk 8 or 10 times 0 .50 in 12.7 mm Browning M2, ANs in remote controlled turrets. Omitted from silverplate B-29s. 2 times 0 0.50 BMG and 1 times 20 mm M2 cannon in tail position. The cannon was later removed. Bombs, asterisk asterisk five thousand pounds, two thousand three hundred kilograms over one thousand six hundred miles, two thousand six hundred kilometers, one thousand four hundred NMI radius at high altitude, twelve thousand pounds, five thousand four hundred kilograms over one thousand six hundred miles, two thousand six hundred kilometers, one thousand four hundred NMI radius at medium altitude 20000 pounds 9100 kilograms maximum over short distances at low altitude could be modified to carry 222000 pounds 10.0t grand slam bombs externally topic notable appearances in media Topic. See also Air Warfare of World War II An APQ-13 ASMA-1 Tarzan Boeing B-29 Superfortress Variants The Great Artiste Key Bird Straight Flush-related development Boeing 377 Stratocruiser Boeing B-50 Superfortress Boeing C-97 Stratofreighter Boeing KB-29 Superfortress Boeing XB-39 Superfortress Tupolev 24 aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era America Bomber Avro Lancaster Nakajima G8N Renzen Consolidated B-32 Dominator Douglas XB-31 Heinkel He-277 Junkers Ju-390 Lockheed XB-30 Messerschmitt Mi-264 Victory Bomber Related lists List of aircraft of World War II List of bomber aircraft List of military aircraft of the United States